Hi everybody, Spaceman Dev here. In this video, I wanted to outline the basics of Foundry Virtual Tabletop Development and how to set up your development environment. I hope this video is the first one in an in-depth series that covers all the nooks and crannies of Foundry API. First, let's go over why someone would want to develop on Foundry. Foundry sets itself apart from other virtual tabletops by being built on modern web technologies, such as Node.js. This means that the code that you'll be writing for Foundry is going to be in JavaScript, a very approachable language for new developers. Secondly, due to Foundry's self-hosted nature, that is to say, unlike something like Roll20, which is in the cloud, Foundry runs on a machine you control. You have full access to the application, allowing you to hack in any functionality that you can think of. Your imagination is the limit here. Thirdly, because Foundry is a virtual tabletop, for a lot of new developers, this gives them a chance to learn coding while directly allowing them to integrate another hobby, tabletop RPGs and board games. This helps makes the rewards of learning to code a little bit more tangible for a new developer. Let's talk about what Foundry development looks like. Largely, you'll be working with four different types of packages in Foundry. Packages are bundles of code that you can share with other people. They allow you to modularize all the cool stuff that you're working on. And as of this video, there's close to over 450 packages available for Foundry that add in all sorts of crazy new functionality. Code for Foundry can be written as a macro, a module, a system, or a world. Let's break these down one by one. Firstly, there are macros. So there's two types of macros. If we click here, we can see the new macro creation screen. Uh, let's say we call this a test macro. Um, there are two types of macros. There's going to be chat macros and script macros. Chat macros let you do whatever you can do uh, down here. They're useful for things like dice. Um, you might know chat macros if uh, you come from Roll20. The macros you create there are very similar to chat macros. For example, if I wanted to roll some dice, I could do 2d6, I could save that macro, and if I hit 1, which is the hotkey for this uh, macro, it will roll that die in chat. Cool. The second type of macro, and we'll call this our script macro, is uh, a little bit more advanced. It gives us the full JavaScript functionality um, for interacting with Foundry that we want. So here, let's try a console.log statement, and we'll mark, mark it hello here. A console.log, if we save this and we, uh, and we do two, nothing will happen. Or it seems like nothing has happened. The next thing we want to do is open up the console. If you're on the Windows app, this is the F12 key. If you're on Mac, I believe it's Command-Shift-J. Um, if you have problems figuring out how to open the console, we'll talk about where you can get the resources for troubleshooting later. When you open the console, it's going to open this right bar here. You can open and close the uh, console to your heart's content. There are a couple of things here that are super useful. We're only going to be focusing on the console for now. You'll see there are a bunch of messages here. The last message is the one that I care about, hello. If you remember, that's what we had our macro do. Console.log, hello. Log in the console down here, uh, hello. And every time we execute this macro, it's going to print hello, and you can see the number going up because it's um, uh, printing it multiple times. Uh, if we wanted to do something else, we could do something else. The other reason the console here is super, super useful is it'll let you figure things out. For example, if I drop a character onto the screen and I have it selected, I can figure out the information about the character by doing this. Dot actor. Um, the, this will show me the full actor data variant. So I already know what is the data that the character is holding. I know its image. Uh, I know its name. I know all of these things about it. If I didn't know what I was looking for, if I had just done canvas and hit a dot, it would show me all of the functions that are available to me. And again, we'll be going over more uh, into the more useful functions as we go through more of these videos. But that's macros in a nutshell. Um, they can be super simple. They can be super, super complex. Normally, if you have a very complex macro, uh, we generally turn them into modules. Um, if it needs like multiple files, if there's things like localization, etc. But if you just wanted to execute some JavaScript and have it do something, macros are the way to go. Going up in complexity from macros are modules. To look at modules, you can go over to add on modules 
click install modules and you'll have a whole list of all different types of modules that add in functionality onto your game. Um, I installed one of mine, which is card support. Uh, this adds support for uh, player hands, decks of cards, etc. Um, to just uh, show you what it does. Uh, and if, if it's not, if a module is not listed in this screen, you can always manually install it by putting its manifest URL down here. Now, the word manifest URL might freak you out, etc. All it is is a file that lists um, things about the module, such as what is its name, the author, etc. In the next video, when we go over how to build a simple module, we'll cover what a module.json is um, and how to host your module such that uh, you can easily download it and install it. So, now that we go into a game world with a module installed, we can go ahead and toggle that module by going here, hitting yes to this module, save module settings, um, give it a second to reload. Uh, the card support module, when it's installed, is going to go ahead and do some initialization scripts, and it's going to import a 54 card hand. Uh, that's what it's doing right now. Uh, and after it, we can after it's finished uploading decks, I'm going to refresh again so I don't have all of these notifications. So that's going to be a simple module. Um, and again, we'll go over how to make a module in the next video. Going up from complexity to a, from a module is a game system. Let's take a look at the simplest game system that we have access to, which is simple world building. If we actually click, click its URL, it'll take us to the source code that is hosted on GitLab. Unlike a module, which has module.json, a system has a system.json and a template.json. What differentiates a system and a module is this template.json. Um, a system is in charge of defining the basics of things like what is uh, an actor and an item uh, within a game world. So this sets up the default values, this sets up the templates for actors and items. A module cannot change these things. A module cannot change or add to the different types of actors that a game world can have. Only a system can do that. Apart from that, things like uh, other pieces of code that you might have, modules can handle that perfectly fine. Really, it just gets down to what is in this template.json. Um, modules cannot have a template.json. They can't add in uh, different item types. They can't add in new actor types. The third type of package is a world. And so you can install a ready-made world that has all of, the, um, all of the journal entries and actors and everything else already set up for you. Um, and then we can actually install the pre-made world, Clash at Cobalt Cauldron, um, which is done in partnership with a bunch of people, I believe, um, that Atro did. So you can build your own publishable world, downloadable Foundry Adventures. I'm working on such a world right now. Basically, someone could download your world and read your adventure in like 5-10 minutes and be ready to play, re ready to go straight, straight from there. Uh, there's no GM prep necessary because you can package all of that inside your world. All of the actors, tokens, journal entries, all the things that a GM would have to spend hours and hours doing before game day, you can just package that together and make that ready for uh, the GM through these downloadable worlds, which is really powerful. Finally, I want to talk about quickly how to set up a development environment uh, for Foundry. This is just going to be the bare bones environment. If you're doing something like TypeScript development, etc., we'll cover all of those environments in a later video. Uh, the two things that I want to go about is, firstly, what editor to use. The most popular one is VS Code. Um, it's just the most popular editor in the development community. It's phenomenal. The user experience is great. Uh, you can grab it at uh, code.visualstudio.com. It's an amazing editor, and all of the videos that we'll be using uh, and typing code will be using VS Code. Secondly, you'll notice there's not a lot of stuff in this Foundry application. You might be saying, well, doesn't he use Foundry? Where are all the worlds that I use? Where are my hundreds of modules that uh, Spaceman Dev uses? Well, the answer is you can actually create um, separate data folders for Foundry, one for development and testing, like I've done here, that's on my desktop, and one for my personal use. And to switch between them, all you have to do is create a new shortcut to Foundry, click Edit, Properties, sorry, uh, and then near the end of it where it says Target, uh, let's bring it out here, uh, after it says exe, you add in this tag, 
uh, hyphen hyphen data path equals and then the path to your uh, data folder that you wanted to use. In this case, I'm redirecting this um, this icon or this shortcut to use the data path on my desktop. That's why when I run this Foundry version, it's going to be the testing one that we just saw that I've been showing you guys after it loads, like so. Um, and when I run my Foundry instance, it's going to be my personal one after it loads, which will have all of my worlds and game systems and so on. Uh, this way that I'm, I'm, I can create a development environment that is separate uh, from my main environment, so if I, if I mess anything up in that environment, if I do anything bad, uh, I don't have to worry about um, any, and losing any data on my main environment. Finally, I want to talk about what are the communities for Foundry and where can you get help? Uh, there are two, maybe three big communities for Foundry. Uh, they're all on Discord. The first one is the Foundry official Discord. Um, and I'll have the links to all of these Discord in the description of this uh, video. The, uh, the channels that you really want to check out are Module Development, System Development, and Macro Polo. Uh, these channels, if you have any problems with developing macros, modules, or systems, they're very active. Someone, like the people there are jumping over to help you, uh, trying to solve your problems. So check those out. There's another Discord called League of Extraordinary Foundry Developers. This is another one where we hang out. Highly suggest checking that out. Uh, and then if you're using the Forge, which is an online hosting service uh, for Foundry, there's also a Discord for that that is kind of really useful. So those three Discords uh, I will have links to down in the video description. Highly suggest joining them. Uh, at least the main Foundry Discord, if nothing else. Um, especially if you have any questions. Like, if you have any questions about what I cover in these videos, it will be faster for you to get a reply in those channels than to post a comment. Uh, all right, that brings us to the close of this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this content, please uh, hit like and subscribe. I'm hoping to put out more of these videos, maybe once a week, once a month, depending on you know what you guys ask for, um, if this really takes off or not. Along with this, I'm also publishing uh, some, other, some more Foundry content. I'm a module developer, so you'll be seeing more and more modules coming out for Foundry uh, from me. Uh, you'll also be seeing some downloadable adventures that I'm working on for the Savage World system. Um, and it's like, I want to see more of that content in Foundry. So I'll be setting up a Patreon and all of these other things. But if you want to support me, one of the best ways you can do is make sure you like this video. So I know that there's people watching. Uh, so I know that this content has an audience. Thank you so much and hope to see you in the next video.